What is a cardioversion or electrical shock for atrial fibrillation? Oftentimes people will come to me, patients will come to me and they'll say, hey, can't you just shock my heart back to normal rhythm? As if that's some kind of long-term treatment option or cure. A shock is not a long-term treatment option for atrial fibrillation. So think about it this way. If we say that atrial fibrillation is an abnormal source of electricity that's forming in a different wall of your heart, different from where your normal source of electricity is, and that these abnormal electrical cells can sleep and do nothing or randomly wake up at any time and generate electricity at a much faster speed than your normal rhythm and take over control of your normal rhythm and speed your heart rate up, if that's what we call atrial fibrillation, that means these cells can wake up whenever they want randomly and they can also go to sleep whenever they want. And unfortunately, as people get older, atrial fibrillation is a progressive rhythm problem. So as they keep getting older, they keep forming more of these abnormal AFib source cells or trigger cells, whatever you want to call them. And the more of them they have on the more walls of that left upper chamber of the heart, the more often it wakes up and the less it wants to go to sleep. Now, depending on what stage you're at, let's say you're going in and out of atrial fibrillation, you're at an earlier stage, you're spending some time in AFib, but not all the time in AFib. And you know, you're in AFib. So you say, okay, can you just shock this to sleep and, and cure me? So here's the thing, a shock, an electrical shock, which is just putting simple, like what you see on TV, defibrillator paddles uh, to shock the person. Although when we shock people for atrial fibrillation, uh, we, we put some patches on connected to a shocking device and we make you fall asleep so you don't feel the pain of the shock. But a shock, electrical shock or cardioversion, all it does is put any abnormal rhythm cells temporarily to sleep. So remember, there are 15 different abnormal rhythms coming from all over the heart, different walls of the heart, and that people can have problems with that we see as electrical specialists on a regular basis. Atrial fibrillation is just the most common abnormal heart rhythm because it can occur by getting older and therefore everyone can potentially get AFib if they live long enough. So it's a very common rhythm, it's not the only one. But it doesn't matter which abnormal rhythm you're talking about. Uh, no matter where it's coming from in the heart, any abnormal source of electricity that randomly wakes up and takes over control of your heart can usually be put back to sleep with an electrical shock. The shock just basically gets all the cells to instantly go to sleep, kind of resets them all, and then your normal rhythm source just wakes back up and takes back over control because it's designed to always be going because your brain doesn't want your heart to just stop permanently. So if we put all rhythms asleep, your normal rhythm and abnormal rhythm sources, your normal rhythm will take back over control and you will be back in normal rhythm. But here's the thing, there's really no difference between us shocking an abnormal rhythm temporarily back to sleep versus it going to back to sleep spontaneously on its own. Just because we shocked it to sleep doesn't get rid of those abnormal cells any more than them going to sleep makes them go away. They are still physically present in the walls of your heart. And as such, they can wake up again in the future and take back over control of your heart and make your heart go fast again. So a shock is just a temporary thing. So it really depends on why are you doing it. So if you're dealing with a dangerous life-threatening rhythm, a rhythm that wakes up and makes your heart go at two, three, four hundred beats per minute where you're pumping, your heart's pumping so fast, it doesn't actually have time to fill up pump, fill up pump. And so you're not really circulating blood. You're not getting blood and oxygen in your brain. And that's what you see on TV where people just pass out and you have to shock them with the paddles to get them out of it and save their life. That's not a heart attack. That's a cardiac arrest. If you're dealing with a dangerous life-threatening rhythm, then yes, you need to shock them right away because shocking them, even though it's not a cure, even though it doesn't make those cells go away or keep them from waking up in the future, but at least it saves their life at that moment. Because the longer you take to shock them, the more they're not getting blood flow their brain and after 20, 30 minutes, they're gonna be dead. And so that's why we put these defibrillator devices in public places like sporting events, schools, airports, uh, supermarkets, where there's a lot of people, but a lot of people have these dangerous rhythm events occur at home and they just are found dead. So a dangerous rhythm, it's a life-threatening emergency. If we're shocking you out of atrial fibrillation, it's not because the AFib's gonna kill you. Remember, we said, as long as you don't have a clotted stroke from atrial fibrillation, everything else we do is just for the symptoms of rapid heart rates. 
Your AFib will never, is not capable, and will never make your heart go at a life-threatening speed the way some of these dangerous rhythms can. That's why we don't classify atrial fibrillation as a directly dangerous, life-threatening heart rhythm. And so we mostly just treat it for symptoms as long as you're on a blood thinner and you don't have a clotted stroke. And so therefore, when we shock somebody out of atrial fibrillation, it's not to save their life. It's not to cure them. It's just to end that episode. And so if we end that episode, it doesn't mean that those cells aren't still there. It doesn't mean they can't wake up again in the future. So this has to do with how do you treat AFib short-term and how do you treat AFib long-term? Short-term, you can do whatever you want. Somebody goes into AFib, you know, whether you just slow it down with the medicine and wait for it to go back to sleep on its own, or you get tired of waiting and you shock it back to sleep, you can do whatever you want. But long-term, that's where we have to talk about, okay, the AFib is waking up a lot, then you're not gonna just keep shocking somebody. I mean, uh, frequently you're gonna have to do something to slow it down so they don't feel it or suppress it with a drug, keep it asleep so they don't keep going in and out of it or do an ablation so that you get rid of the cells from the inside and they don't keep going in and out of it. You have to do something more long-term. And also realize that people will say, well, okay, if you shock it, you know, how long is it gonna be before it wakes back up? Well, how long it's gonna take before it wakes back up has more to do with how many AFib cells you have in the walls of your heart, what stage of AFib you're in, more than anything to do with the shock. The shock doesn't keep you from your AFib cells from waking up. Like I said, it just puts them to sleep temporarily and they're still there and they can wake up whenever they want. So it has more to do with what stage are you at? Remember, the stage of AFib has to do with how many walls you have worth of these AFib cells you have them on. The more these AFib cells, sources and triggers you have, the more walls they're on, the more they want, the, the stronger they are, the more they want to wake up, the less they want to be back to sleep. So if you take somebody who's at an early stage of atrial fibrillation, say what we call paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, where that's defined as episodes lasting less than seven days. So let's say you say, oh, you know, I'm in an early stage and I, I'm only in AFib, you know, twice a year for, for half a day. Okay, that's a very early stage. Well, if you're in an episode and we shock you out of it because we're tired of like waiting for it to go back to sleep on its own, you might get half a year or a year because your AFib is only waking up once or twice a year. On the other hand, if you're somebody who's at a later stage, say persistent atrial fibrillation, where you're spending like a week, seven to 10 days in it, and then you know three or four days out of it, and you're in it 70% of the time, and we shock you out of it, you may only get three or four days before it wakes back up because you have so many AFib cells, they're waking up most of the time, and they're not asleep very much. So the cardioversion or the shock really has nothing to do with when the AFib is gonna wake back up. That has more to do with how many AFib cells you have in there, what stage of AFib you're at, and how often is your AFib waking up based on how much, what stage of AFib you're at, how progressed your AFib is. It really has nothing to do with the shock. Now, having said that, if you opt to use a drug to keep the AFib cells asleep, the antiarrhythmic medications that work to keep the AFib asleep, oftentimes we will shock you after loading you with one of those drugs, because if you're you know, in AFib 90% of the time, and we want to get you back to normal rhythm and we shock you and it only lasts a day or two before waking back up because you have so many cells that they just want to be awake well then oftentimes we will load you with that drug and with one of the drugs to try to keep it asleep which drug out of the five based is kind of based on how strong your afib is how progressed you are what stager is the stronger the stage the more advanced the stage the stronger drug we're going to try to use because we need to um the weaker drug wouldn't work and we put you on the drug and load you on that for a week or two. And then we do the shock because the drug isn't always strong enough to put the AFib to sleep on its own. The shock is almost always strong enough to put this AFib back to sleep unless you're progressed to the point where your AFib is permanent, in which case nothing we do is gonna get you out of the AFib. It's permanent. And if you try to shock those people, it doesn't work at all, or it works for like three seconds and it wakes right back up. So permanent is permanent, but up until it's permanent, we shock you out of it that may not keep you out of it but it will get you out of it for the moment so what we do is we load you with the drug to keep it asleep and then we shock you and the drug is oftentimes much better at keeping the afib asleep once we force it to sleep with the shock it's not all usually most of the time not strong enough to get you to sleep it to sleep on its own but that's how we would combine it and so people say well why you know, why did you, didn't you just shock me without the drug? Well, because we shocked you with the drug, it's gonna wake up fairly quickly. Uh, if we shock you with the drug, then we know the drug's working if you don't, if your AFib stays asleep and doesn't wake back up. And remember, those drugs don't 
magically get rid of your AFib cells. It's not like, oh, you shocked me on the drug. I stayed in normal rhythm. Last time only stayed a, a day or two before I woke back up. Now I'm staying, you know, staying in normal rhythm on the drug. So after two weeks, I can stop the drug because it magically got rid of my AFib. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. So the shock has its purposes, but it's more, it's really a short-term treatment option, not any kind of long-term treatment option. But it is very simple to do a shock. Uh, it's a very minor procedure. You come in, you, uh, we attach the paddles, we make you fall asleep for five, 10 minutes, we press the button, we shock you, back to normal rhythm, we wake you up, and we let you go home. So it's not like an ablation where we're spending hours trying to get rid of the cells from the inside, we're just putting them temporarily to sleep.